The first part of this video will have on-screen spoilers for the first season of Inside Job, and later I'll give a warning when I'm about to start spoiling season 2. Inside Job is a pretty fun show, but admittedly it wasn't one that I was too crazy about at first. The first season was entertaining enough to watch, it had an interesting premise and I really enjoyed the world building. The shenanigans that arise from a group like this working for the deep state are wacky enough to carry the comedy of a show like this. I'm also in love with the lead character Reagan, and Brett's pretty cool too. Outside of that, I didn't find this show to be anything special. A couple of things that I really love in film and TV are character depth and things that surprise me. These are both areas that the first season of Inside Job was particularly weak in. The plot and comedy was often really predictable, especially to its gross overuse of reference humor. It wasn't unenjoyable, it was just unsurprising, and that made it less exciting to watch. Additionally, the majority of the main cast was not only rather one note, but also not very likable. Most of these guys are just stereotype joke machines whose main purpose is to be souls to Reagan. Reagan, my love. For a character who has plans for world domination and who creates robots of romantic interest so she can practice going on a date, she's easily the most grounded and realistic character in the entire show. Her motivations make a lot of sense and I'd find myself rooting for her in every episode. Also, she's hot. Her dynamic with Brett was really enjoyable and I liked seeing their friendship blossom. So yeah, season one was fairly decent. The world building and Reagan both had me interested enough to watch the second season and wow, was I pleasantly surprised. I'm gonna start doing season two spoilers now, but if you have to leave, just know that some of this stuff gets pretty good. All right, get out of here, you silly little guy, not wanting to have a fun show spoiled for you, goofy little guy. Get out of here, go, get. I was so surprised when they killed off Reagan. Nah, but imagine. Reagan is a beautifully written character. She sees the corrupt and incompetent way that the world is being run, and she wants nothing more than to systematically change everything from the top. She's on the war path, and there's nothing she has that she wouldn't sacrifice to get the power that she believes she can wield for good. However, her tendencies for self-sacrifice coexist with her big heart for the people she cares about in her life. She's not ready to throw their happiness away as easily as she would her own, even if it would benefit her in the long run. I think this is one of the key traits that makes her such a likable character. We wish that she loved herself as much as she loves the people that she will put her life on the line for. We see this a lot with her parents, and we learn that Reagan has a history of realizing that the man her mother is with is a bad apple, and Reagan tends to call the guy out in the interest of protecting her mom. Her mom resents her for this and believes that Reagan simply doesn't like seeing her happy. So when Reagan learns that her mom's current boyfriend, Keanu Reeves, is an immortal vampire who likely intends to drink her mom's blood, she sets out to sabotage the relationship and when that fails, to just kill him. She's aware that her mom may never forgive her for this and that confronting Keanu Reeves in battle is particularly dangerous, but she puts all that aside in the interest of protecting someone that she cares about. It was really nice to see her mother coming to understand that Reagan's just been looking out for her all these years at the end of the episode. This season did a nice job at providing closure for a lot of the conflicts it introduced, rather than just leaving things hanging in a fragile state. Reagan's interactions with Brett throughout this season were really sweet. Brett got a lot more depth this time around. We know he has the personality of a golden retriever. He's a textbook yes man who aims to please. And in episode 5, we get to understand the environment he was raised in that caused him to become like this. As much as I enjoyed Brett's presence in season 1, we really didn't get much in the way of actually understanding his character. The Breakfast Club was one of the weakest episodes of the first season, and although we get a glimpse at his childhood, we really don't get painted a full picture. This season was different. We get to see his abusive family in action, influencing his indecision and behavior to this day. In a household an environment like this, it's really easy to see why he was molded into the person that he became. I love the way Reagan was always in his corner no matter what. Her selflessness towards her friends shines the brightest in the episode Project Reboot. Her boyfriend isn't responding to her, the entire team has abandoned her, and she's about to face off with her father. The only ones she has left are Brett and Alpha Beta, who I ended up liking a lot this season by the way, but the point is Brett was the only human she really had left. When it was the world against her, Brett had her back, but Reagan didn't want to bring him down with her. While this season had led me to grow attached to these characters, this was the first moment in the show that really moved me. I don't know if we'll ever get back to our realities, but I've seen yours, and it looks good. If I succeed, I'll see you again. But if not, good luck, Brett. But... It was such a selfless action from Reagan, and it left a really powerful, bittersweet feeling within me as Reagan moves in to confront her dad. Now this scene was one of the biggest surprises of the season for me. Everything had been amping up to this dramatic showdown between Reagan and Rand. He had stolen her dream job from under her nose and treated her and her crew like shit. 
Her forcefully taking back over Cognito almost felt inevitable, but when she walks through that door expecting to battle a villain hungry for power, she just finds a sad broken man desperately looking for a way to get his family back. The empathy Reagan displays in this scene is astounding, and it truly takes a bigger person to find the forgiveness that she does here. Also, Brett came back for her because he's the best, and the rest of the group came back despite the fact that they suck. We'll touch on that later. The introduction of Ron as Reagan's love interest in episode 1 worked brilliantly. Reagan, along with myself, quickly turned from finding him to be annoying and arrogant to empathizing with and liking him. When he was younger, he got really into conspiracy theories and wanted to believe that in this chaotic world there was something behind it all with a purpose, keeping the peace. When he was recruited into the Illuminati, he only found disappointment, as the shadow government turned out to be just as selfish and incompetent as the regular one. It's, it's just Holes all the way down. He and Reagan quickly bond over their disdain for their respective secret societies and promptly hook up. This is the fastest I've ever found myself rooting for a couple. Their chemistry is palpable in every scene that they're in except for when they're working together. I was honestly blindsided by the finale's devastating twist, but in hindsight, their relationship was doomed from the beginning. Ron despises everything about his job. He can't sleep at night because of the things that he's done. He wants his personal life to be as separate as possible from the things he does for a living. Reagan, on the other hand, doesn't have any regrets. She believes that everything she does is for the greater good and part of her master plan to take over. She doesn't want to abandon the system she resents, she wants to take over and become the most important factor of it so that she can change everything. While they share the same feelings towards the people they work for, their ideas for an ideal future couldn't be more opposite. As people, they're perfect together, but to live a life together, one of them would have to abandon something that they believed in. As much as she cares about this job, working at Cognito isn't healthy for Reagan. When she runs the idea that she might leave forever by Brett, his knee-jerk reaction is of course to tell his best friend to stay. But when he considers Reagan's own happiness for a moment, he decides to let her go. Reagan ends up making the same decision for Ron. The only way she gets everything she ever wanted is by letting go of what matters to her most now. She knows that Ron will be happy without her, and that's good enough for her. In the end, and without realizing it, she's following the footsteps of her father that she spent years resenting. She's abandoning where she's found happiness now in an attempt to strive for more happiness in the future. This show went from something I thought was kind of fun to have on in the background to something that made me cry. I really connected with the character leads in this season. It wasn't perfect, and I hope there's a couple of things the writers take into account for future seasons. I hope they either give these four characters of the group more depth, or they turn them into villains, or write them off the show entirely. Because right now, they're just a bunch of selfish assholes that can be a little funny everyone once in a while. They have potential, but if they aren't going to tap into that, I don't really want to see them as much as we do right now. I also hope they lay off the reference humor a bit. I do think reference humor can be funny, but only when used in heavy moderation. Like, okay, it's kind of funny that Keanu Reeves is in here, but I mean, come on. That guy's already in Fortnite. Overall, this was a fantastic season that I have a lot more praise for than I do complaints. I can easily see this going down as one of the many fantastic animated shows that just had a rocky first season while it was finding its footing. Like Rick and Morty. Hey, 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 whoa, everybody relax. Let me explain, let me explain myself, let me explain. In my video about Rick and Morty that comes out next week. Like and subscribe, I'll see you then.